Well, hi there, and welcome to our Sunday song time. And as you can tell, I'm not recording this on a Sunday morning at all. Actually, I thought I would pick a nice, gentle evening. Um, yeah, when uh, when the house is kind of quiet, everybody's uh, gone off to bed. Even the cat has gone to sleep. Not a creature is stirring. And the cat's taking care of any mice, you know, yeah, that might be stirring. I wanted to do this song for you, and I know uh, some people have mentioned how much they enjoy singing along with me, and this is one you'll definitely want to sing along to. Um, it goes back to the year, well, let's see, I guess it was 1818, and uh, it was in Orberndorf, Austria, little church there in that little village, and um, they discovered on Christmas Eve during the day, that the church organ had been broken. Um, different uh, ideas on what happened. Uh, some think it was just years of the salt air finally finally taking its toll. Others thought that maybe a mouse did chew through some of the bellows. Well, anyway, they couldn't get a decent note out of it. And the parish priest, his name was Joseph Moore, and he went to his music director, Franz Gruber, and he said, you know, Franz, you, you play the guitar, don't you? And Franz Gruber played the guitar. Hey, you know what? That makes this one of the uh, older Christmas songs, maybe one of the only ones, written specifically for guitar. Hey, that makes it good for me. Uh, anyway, uh, Father Joe had this little poem that he'd written a year or so earlier. Just wrote a little simple poem, tucked it away in his desk. Didn't think much of it. But he showed it to his music director and he thought, you know, I wonder if we could do something with this so we at least have a song for tonight's Christmas Eve Mass. And so uh, Franz Gruber, music director, he, uh, he took the poem home and uh, took his guitar and uh, found a very simple melody. In fact, he even uh, apologized a little bit to, uh, to Father Joseph Moore because he said, you know, I, I decided um, I couldn't really write a chorus here, but what I did was I just took, took a line out of each of your stanzas and just repeated it, and, and you know, it kind of makes it work okay. So anyway, that uh, Christmas Eve in that little church there in Austria, they had some music. And as you can imagine, back in 1818, um, you know, guitar playing wasn't all that well accepted in the church circles, but they managed. Well, uh, that was pretty much supposed to be it, right? Because uh, Father Moore didn't consider himself to be a poet of any kind. And Franz Gruber, he would have been more used to working with choirs and, of course, that pipe organ in the little church. And so in the new year, when, uh, when a man came to fix the organ, he just happened to find the sheet of paper with some musical notes on it that uh, Franz Gruber had left there. And he started playing it, just as he was tuning up the organ, you know. And he thought to himself, you know, this isn't a bad little song. Uh, do you mind if I take it with me? I have some friends uh, that belong to choirs and things. And they said, yeah, sure, you know, uh, go ahead. Well, sure enough, uh, the next Christmas, uh, it started to get sung by different choirs. And well, uh, as they say, uh, the rest is history because that song soon went all over the world. And uh, the song, well, these days, as simple as it is, is often listed as people's absolute favorite Christmas carol. And the song, Silent Night, Holy Night, if you know the story at all, it actually stopped a war. Yeah, well, briefly, uh, the First World War. And uh, it was uh, Christmas Eve when Allied soldiers heard German soldiers across no man's land singing Still Nacht. And they stopped for a while and listened to the music, and then they decided to call a truce. And for like, I don't know, a day and a half or so, there was no war. The guns stopped. Um, they shared some cigarettes and chocolate and had a game of soccer. And Wow. You know, think about the power in a song to stop war. <laughs> Sounds like we could use another one. <laughs> well, actually, maybe this one might just be good enough to get you to pause for a little bit. 
and reflect on what is truly important in our world and especially this time of year. As I said, you sing along with me. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace Sleep in heavenly peace Silent night Holy night Shepherds quake Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, sun. dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Silent night. Holy night. Well, if you've ever been around the birth of an infant, it probably wasn't a quiet night. But there is something very sacred about that night in Bethlehem all those years ago. Hey, just want to share a couple of words from the Christmas story, this time from Matthew chapter 1. Now, you think about uh, Joseph and uh, this young woman that he was engaged to be married to was with child, and he knew it wasn't his. And uh, an angel appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place, Matthew tells us, to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, and he quotes the prophet Isaiah, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And I was thinking of some words from Mary, the Lord's mother, and we have uh, them in uh, Luke chapter 1, Mary's song. And uh, she said this, she said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. And then she included these words, really for you and me, I think. She said that his mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. Well, here we are in this generation. 
all these years, certainly from that night in Bethlehem, and all these years too, over 200 now, from the writing of Silent Night, Holy Night. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, that uh, little croaking of mine uh, here late at night. Um, Listen, from my family to yours, I wish you a very Merry Christmas. May God richly bless you. And you know, from generation to generation, and here we are at, uh, well, pretty much the end of 2021, ready to look forward into 2022. And he's still worthy of being called Emmanuel. He is still God with us. God bless you.